Adam Lindsay Gordon by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. At rest, hard by the margin of that sea whose sounds are mingled with his noble verse, now lies the shell that nevermore will house the fine strong spirit of my gifted friend. Yea, he who flashed upon us suddenly a shining soul with syllables of fire who sang the first great songs these lands can claim to be their own, the one who did not seem to know what royal place awaited him within the temple of the beautiful, he passed away. And we, who knew him, sit aghast in darkness, dumb with that great grief whose stature yet we cannot comprehend. While over yonder churchyard, hearsed with pines, the night wind sings its immemorial hymn, and sobs above a newly covered grave the bard the scholar the man who lived that frank that open-hearted life which keeps the splendid fire of english chivalry from dying out the one who never wronged a fellow man the faithful friend who judged the many anxious to be loved of him by what he saw and not by what he heard as lesser spirits do the brave great soul that never told a lie or turned aside to fly from danger. He, as I say, was one of that bright company this sin-stained world can ill afford to lose. They did not know the hundreds who had read his sturdy verse and reveled over ringing major notes, the mournful meaning of the undersong which runs through all he wrote and often takes the deep autumnal, half-pathetic tone of forest winds and march nor did they think that on that healthy-hearted man there lay the wild specific curse which seems to cling for ever to the poet's twofold life to adam lindsay gordon i who laid two years ago on lionel michael's grave a tender leaf of my regard yea i who culled a garland from the flowers of song to place where harper sleeps i left alone the sad disciple of a shining band now gone. To Adam Lindsay Gordon's name I dedicate these lines, and if tis true that past the darkness of the grave the soul becomes omniscient, then the bard may stoop from his high seat to take the offering and read it with a sigh for human friends in human bonds and gray with human griefs. And having wove and proffered this poor wreath, I stand today as lone as he who saw at nightfall, through the glimmering moony mist, the last of Arthur on the wailing mere, and strained in vain to hear the going voice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number two. In memory of Edward Butler by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley A voice of grave deep emphasis is in the woods tonight. No sound of radiant day is this, no candice of the light. Here in the fall and flights of leaves against grey widths of sea, the spirit of the forest grieves for lost Persephone. The fair divinity that roves where many waters sing Doth miss her daughter of the groves, the golden-headed spring. She cannot find the shining hand that once the rose caressed. There is no blossom on the land, no bird in last year's nest. Here where this strange Demeter weeps, this large sad life unseen, where July strong wild torrents leaps the wet hill heads between i sit and listen to the grief the high supreme distress which sobs above the fallen leaf like human tenderness where sighs the sedge and moans the marsh the hermit plover calls the voices straightened streams is harsh by windy mountain walls there is no gleam upon the hills of last October's wings. The shining lady of the rills is with forgotten things. 
Now where the land's worn face is grey, and storm is on the wave, what flower is left to bear away to Edward Butler's grave? What tender rose of song is here that I may pluck and send? Across the hills and seas austere to my lamented friend. There is no blossom left at all but this white winter leaf, whose glad green life is past recall, is token of my grief. Where love is tender grows of grace, the firstborn of the spring. Perhaps there may be found a place for my pale offering. For this heroic Irish heart we miss so much today, whose life was of our lives a part, what words have I to say? Because I know the noble woe that shrinks beneath the touch, the pain of brothers stricken low, I will not say too much. But often in the lonely space, when night is on the land, I dream of a departed face, a gracious vanished hand and when the solemn waters roll against the winter steep i see a great benignant soul beside me in my sleep yea while the frost is on the ways with barren banks austere the friend i knew in other ways is often very near i do not hear a single tone but where this brother gleams the elders of the seasons flown are with me in my dreams. The saintly face of Stenhouse turns, his kind old eyes I see, and pale and ridley from their urns arise and look at me. By Butler's side the lights reveal the father of his fold. I start from sleep in tears, I feel, that I I'm growing old. Where Edward Butler sleeps, the wave is hardly ever heard. But now the leaves above his grave by August songs are stirred. The slope beyond is green and still, and in my dreams I dream. The hill is like an Irish hill beside an Irish stream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How the Melbourne Cup Was Won by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas Melbourne, Australia In the beams of a beautiful day Made soft by a breeze from the sea The horses were started away The fleet-footed thirty and three Where beauty with shining attire Shed more than a noon on the land. Like spirits of thunder and fire, They flashed by the fence in the stand. And the mouths of pale thousands were hushed, When Somnus, a marvel of strength, Past bows like a sudden wind rushed, And led the bay colt by a length. But a chestnut came galloping through, And down where the river tide steals, O'Brien, on brave Waterloo, Dashed up to the big horse's heels. But Cracknell still kept to the fore, and first by the water bend wheeled, when a cry from the stand and a roar ran over green furlongs of field. Far out by the back of the course, a demon of muscle and pluck flashed onward the favourite horse, with his hoofs flaming clear of the ruck. But the wonderful Queenslander came, and the thundering leaders were three, and a ring and a roll of acclaim went out like a surge of the sea. An epigram, epigram wins, the colt of the derby, the bay. But back where the crescent begins, the favourite melted away. And the marvel that came from the north with another was heavily thrown. And here at the turning flashed forth to the front a surprising unknown. By shed and by paddock and gate, the strange, the magnificent black, led Darabin a length in the straight, with thirty and one at his back. But the Derby colt tired at the rails, and Ivory's marvellous bay passed Burton, O'Brien, and Hales, as fleet as a flash of the day. But Goff, on the African star, came clear in the front of his field, hard followed by Morrison's Czar, and the blood unaccustomed to yield. 
Yes, first from the turn to the end, with a boy on him paler than ghost, the horse that had hardly a friend, shot flashing like fire by the post. When Graham was riding, t'was late, for his friends to applaud on the stands. The black through the bend and the straight had the race of the year in his hands. In a clamour of calls and acclaim, he landed the money, the horse, with the beautiful African name that rang to the back of the course. Hurrah for the Hercules race, and the terror that came from his stall, with the bright, the intelligent face, to show the road home to them all. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Blue Mountain Pioneers by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Dauntless Three For twenty days and nights These heroes battled with the haughty heights For twenty spaces of the star and sun These Romans kept their harness buckled on by gaping gorges and by cliffs austere these fathers struggled in the great old year their feet they set on strange hills scarred by fire their strong arms forced a path through brake and briar they fought with nature till they reached the throne where morning glittered on the great unknown there in a time with praise and prayer supreme pause blacksland lawson wentworth in a dream there where the silver arrows of the day smote slope and spire they halted on their way behind them were the conquered hills they faced the vast green west with glad strange beauty graced and every tone of cave and tree was as a voice of splendid prophecy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Robert Parks by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley High travelling winds by royal hill Their awful anthem sing, And songs exalted flow and fill The caverns of the spring. Tonight across a wild wet plain A shadow sobs and strays, The trees are whispering in the rain Of long departed days. I cannot say what forest saith, Its words are strange to me, I only know that in its breath are tones that used to be. Yea, in these deep dim solitudes I hear of sound I know, the voice that lived in Penrith woods twelve weary years ago. And while the hymn of other years is on a listening land, the angel of the past appears and leads me by the hand and takes me over moaning wave and tracks of sleepless change to set me by a lonely grave within the lonely range. The halo of the beautiful is round the quiet spot. The grass is deep and green and cool where sound of life is not. Here in this lovely lap of bloom the grace of glen and glade that tender days and nights loom, my gentle friend was laid. I do not mark the shell that lies beneath the touching flowers. I only see the radiant eyes of other scenes and hours. I only turn my grief inspired like some forsaken thing to look upon a life retired as hushed beasts spring. The glory of unblemished days is on this silent mound. The light of years, too pure for praise, I kneel on holy ground. Here is the clay of one whose mind 
was fairer than the dew. The sweetest nature of his kind I happily ever knew. This Christian walking on the white, clear paths apart from strife, kept far from all the heat and light that fills his father's life. The clamor and exceeding flame were never in his days. A higher object was his aim than thrones of shine and praise. Ah, like an English April psalm that floats by sea and strand, he passed away into the calm of the eternal land. The chair he filled is set aside upon his father's floor. In morning hours at evening tide, his step is heard no more. No more his face the forest knows, his voice is of the past. But from his life of beauty flows a radiance that will last. Yea, from the hours that heard his speech, high shining memories give, that fine example which will teach our children how to live. Here, kneeling in the body far from grave of flower and dew, my friend beyond the path of star, I say these words to you, though you were as a fleeting flame across my road austere, the memory of your face became a thing forever dear. I never have forgotten yet the Christian's gentle touch, and since the time when we last met, you know I've suffered much. I feel that I have given pain by certain words and deeds, but stricken here with sorrow's rain, my contrite spirit bleeds. For your so sake I rule the blow, for this assurance send. I smote in noon and public foe, but not the private friend. I know that once I wronged you, sire, but since that awful day, my soul has passed through blood and fire. My head is very grey. Here let me pause from years like yours. There ever flows and thrives the splendid blessing which endures beyond our little lives. For lonely lands across the wave is sent to night by me. This rose of reference for the grave beside the mountain lee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Her Window by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Tonight a strong south wind in thunder sings across the city. Now by salt-wet flats and ridges perished with the breath of drought comes up a deep sonorous gulf-like voice, far-traveled herald of some distant storm that strikes with harsh gigantic wings the cliff where twofold Otway meets his straitened surf and makes a white wrath of a league of sea. Tonight the fretted Yara chafes its banks and dusks and glistens, while the city shows a ring of windy light. From street to street the noise of labor, linked to hurrying wheels, rolls off as rolls the stately sound of wave when he that hears it hastens from the shore. Tonight, beside a moody window, sits a wife who watches for her absent love. Her home is in a dim suburban street in which the winds, like one with straitened breath, now fleet with whispers, dry and short half-sobs, or pause and beat against the showery panes like homeless memories seeking for a home. There, where the plopping of the guttered rain sounds like a heavy footstep in the dark, where every shadow thrown by flickering light seems like her husband halting at the door. I say a woman sits and waits and sits, then trims her fire 
and comes to wait again the chapel clock strikes twelve he has not come the night grows wilder and the wind dies off the roads now turn to thoroughfares of storm save when a solitary stumbling foot breaks through the clamour then the watcher starts and trembles with her hand upon the key and flutters with the love upon her lips then sighs returns and takes her seat once more is this the old old tale ah do not ask my gentle reader but across your doubts throw shining reasons on the happier side or if you cannot choose but doubt the man if you do count him in your thoughts as one who leaves a good wife by a lonely hearth for more than half the night for scenes we'll say of revelry i pray you think of how that wretch must suffer in his waking times if he be human when he recollects that through the long long hours of evil feasts with painted sin and under glaring gas his brightest friend was at a window seal a watcher seated in a joyless room and happily left without a loaf of bread i having learned from sources pure and high from springs of love that make the perfect wife can say how much a woman will endure for one to whom her tender heart has passed when fortune fails and friends drop off and time has shadows waiting in predestined ways when shame that grows from want of money comes and sets its brand upon a husband's brow and makes him walk an alien in the streets one faithful face on which a light divine becomes a glory when vicissitude is in its darkest mood one face i say marks not the fallings off that others see seeks not to know the thoughts that others think cares not to hear the words that others say but through her deep and self-sufficing love she only sees the bright-eyed youth that won her maiden heart in other happier days and not the silent gloomy-featured man that frets and shivers by a sullen fire and therefore knowing this from you who've shared with me the ordeal of most trying times i sometimes feel a hot shame flushing up to think that there are those among my sex who are so cursed with small-souled selfishness that they do not give to noble wives like you for love that first and final flower of life the dreadful portion of a drunkard's home end of poem this recording is in the public domain William B. Daly by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. That love of letters which is as the light Of deathless verse, intense, ineffable, Hath made this scholar's nature like the white, Pure Roman soul of whom the poets tell he having lived so long with lords of thought the grand hero plants of speech and song hath from the high august communion caught some portion of their inspiration strong the clear bright atmosphere through which he looks is one by no dim close horizon bound the power shed as flame from noble books hath made for him a larger world around and he thus strengthened with the fourfold force which scholarship to genius gives is one that liberal thinkers pausing in their course with fine esteem are glad to look upon he with the faultless intuition born of splendid faculties sees things all right and all his strong immeasurable scorn falls like a thunder on the hypocrite but for the sufferer and the son of shame on whom remorse a great sad burden lies his kindness glistens like a morning flame immense compassion shines within his eyes 
firm to the church by which his father stood but tolerant to every form of creed he longs for universal brotherhood and is a christian gentleman indeed these in his honor may his life be long and like a summer with a brilliant close as full of music as a perfect song as radiant as a rich unhandled rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain To the Spirit of Music by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt. To the Spirit of Music, one, the cool grass blowing in a breeze of April valleys, sooms and sways, on slopes that dip to quiet seas, through far faint drifts of yellowing haze, I lie like one who, in a dream of sounds and splendid coloured things seems lifted into life supreme and has a sense of waxing wings for through a great arch-light which floods and breaks and spreads and swims along high royal robed autumnal woods i hear a glorious sunset song ah but you turpy i that pause and listen to the strain divine can never learn its words because i am no son of thine how sweet is wandering where the west is full of thee what time the morn looks from his halls of rosy rest across green miles of gleaming corn how sweet are dreams in shady nooks when bees are out and day is mute while down the dell there floats the brook's fine echo of thy marvellous lute and oh how sweet is that sad tune of thine within the evening breeze which roams beneath the mirrored moon on silver sleeping summer seas how blessed are they whom thou hast crowned thy priests the lords who understand the deep divinity of sound and live their lives in wonderland these stand within thy courts and see the light exceeding round thy throne but i an alien unto thee i faint afar off and alone Two. in hills where the keen thessalonian made clamour with horse and with horn in oracular woods the dodonian the mystical maiden was born and the high the olympian seven ringed round with ineffable flame baptized her in halos of heaven and gave her her beautiful name and delphicus loving her brought her immutable dower of dreams and clothed her with glory and taught her the words of the winds and the streams she dwelt with the echoes that dwell in far immemorial hills she wove of their speeches a spell she borrowed the songs of the rills and anthems of forest and fire and passionate psalms of the rain had life in the life of the lyre and breath in its infinite strain in a fair in a floral abode of purple and yellow and red the voice of her floated and flowed the light of her lingered and spread and ever there slipped through the bars of the leaves of her luminous bowers syllables splendid as stars and faultless as moonlit flowers three lady of a land of wonder daughter of the hill supernal far from frost and far from thunder and the suns and moons eternal long ago the strong immortals took her hands on wheels of fire caught her up and shut their portals floral maid with fervent lyre but stray fallen notes of brightness yet within our world are ringing floating on the winds of lightness glorious fragments of her singing bud of light she shines above us but a few of starry pinions passion souls who are her lovers dwell in her divine dominions few they are but in the centric fanes of beauty hold their station kings of music lords authentic of the worlds of inspiration these are they to whom are given eyes to see the singing streamland 
far from earth and near to heaven known to gods and men as dreamland mournful humanity stricken and worn toiling for peace in undignified days set in a sphere with the shadows forlorn seeing sublimity dimmed by a haze mournful humanity wearing the sign of trouble with time and unequable things long alienated from spaces divine sometimes remembers that once it had wings chiefly it is when the song and the light sweeten the heart of the summering west music and glory that lend to the night glimpses of marvellous havens of rest chiefly it is when the beautiful day dies with a sound on its lips like a psalm anthem of loveliness drifting away over a sea of unspeakable calm then euterpe's harmonies in the ballad rich and rare freighted with old memories float upon the evening air float like shine in films of rain full of past pathetic themes tales of perished joy and pain frail and faint as dreams in dreams then to far-off homes we rove homes of youth and hope and faith beautiful with lights of love sanctified by shrines of death ah and in that quiet hour soul by soul is borne away over tracts of leaf and flower lit with a supernal day over music world serene spheres unknown to woes and wars homes of wildernesses green silver seas and golden shores then like spirits glorified sweet to hear and bright to see lords in eden they abide robed with strange new majesty end of poem this recording is in the public domain john dunmore lang by henry kendall read for librivox .org by Tavarish. the song that is lost of the many whose music is full of thy name is weaker o father than any is fainter than flickering flame but far in the folds of the mountains whose bases are hoary with sea by lone immemorial fountains this singer is mourning for thee because thou wert chief and a giant with those who fought on for the right a hero determined defiant as flame was the sleep of thy might like stephen in days that are olden thy lot with a rabble was cast but seasons came on that were golden and peace was thy mother at last i knew of thy fierce tribulation thou wert ever the same in my thought the father and friend of a nation through good and through evil report at ephesus fighting in fetters paul drove the wild beasts to their pen so thou with the lash of thy letters whipped infamy back to its den the noise of thy battle is over thy sword is hung up in its sheath thy grave has been decked by its lover with beauty of willowy wreath the winds sing about thee forever the voices of hill and of sea but the cry of the conflict will never bring sorrow again unto thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain On a Baby Buried by the Hawksbury by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo On a Baby Buried by the Hawksbury Lines Sent to a Young Mother A grace that was lent for a very few hours By the bountiful spirit above us She sleeps like a flower in the land of the flowers She went ere she knew how to love us her music of heaven was strange to the sphere her voice is a silence forever in the bitter wild fall 
of a sorrowful year we buried our bird by the river but the gold of the grass and the green of the vine and the music of wind and of water and the torrent of song and superlative shine are close to our dear little daughter the months of the year are all gracious to her a winter breath visits her never she sleeps like a bird in a cradle of myrrh by the banks of the beautiful river end a poem this recording is in the public domain song of the shingle splitters by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by nemo song of the shingle splitters in dark wild woods where the lone owl broods and the dingoes nightly yell where the curlew's cry goes floating by we splitters of shingles dwell and all day through from the time of the dew to the hour when the mopoke calls our mallets ring where the wood birds sing sweet hymns by the waterfalls and all night long we are lulled by the song of gales in the grand old trees and in the breaks we can hear the lakes and the moan of the distant seas for far from heat and dust of street and hall and turret and dome and forest deep where the torrents leap is the shingle splitter's home the dweller in town may lie upon down and own his palace and park we envy him not his prosperous lot though we slumber on sheets of bark our food is rough but we have enough our drink is better than wine for cool creeks flow wherever we go shut in from the hot sunshine though rude our roof it is weatherproof and at the end of the days we sit and smoke over yarn and joke by the bush fire's sturdy blaze for away from din and sorrow and sin where troubles but rarely come we jog along like a merry song in the shingle splitter's home what though our work be heavy we shirk from nothing beneath the sun and toil is sweet to those who can eat and rest when the day is done in the sabbath time we hear no chime no sound of the sunday bells but yet heaven smiles on the forest isles and god in the woodland dwells we listen to notes from the million throats of chorister birds on high our psalm is the breeze in the lordly trees and our dome is the broad blue sky oh a brave frank life unsmitten by strife we live wherever we roam and our hearts are free as a great strong sea in the shingle splitter's home end a poem this recording is in the public domain on a street by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by nemo on a street i dread that street its haggard face i have not seen for eight long years a mother's curse is on the place there's blood my reader in her tears no child of man shall ever track through filthy dust the singer's feet a fierce old memory drags me back i hate its name i dread that street upon the lap of green sweet lands whose months are like your english maize i try to hide in leith sands the bitter old bohemian days but sorrow speaks in singing leaf and trouble talketh in the tide the skirts of a stupendous grief are trailing ever at my side I will not say who suffered there, tis best the name aloof to keep, because the world is very fair, its light should sing the dark to sleep. But let me whisper, in that street a woman 
faint through want of bread has often pawned the quilt and sheet and wept upon a barren bed how gladly would i change my theme or cease the song and steal away but on the hill and by the stream a ghost is with me night and day a dreadful darkness full of wild chaotic visions comes to me i seem to hear a dying child its mother's face i seem to see here surely on this bank of bloom my verse with shine would ever flow but ah it comes the rented room with man and wife who suffered so from flower and leaf there is no hint i only see a sharp distress a lady in a faded print a careworn writer for the press i only hear the brutal curse of landlord clamoring for his pay and yonder is the pauper's hearse that comes to take a child away apart and with the half gray head of sudden age again i see the father writing by the dead to earn the undertaker's fee no tear at all is asked for him a drunkard well deserves his life but voice will quiver eyes grow dim for her the patient pure young wife the gentle girl of better days as timid as a mountain fawn who used to choose untrodden ways and place at night her rags and pawn she could not face the lighted square or show the street her poor thin dress in one close chamber bleak and bare she hid her burden of distress her happy schoolmates used to drive on gaudy wheels the town about the meat that keeps a dog alive she often had to go without i tell you this is not a tale conceived by me but bitter truth bohemia knows it pinched and pale beside the pyre of burnt-out youth these eyes of mine have often seen the sweet girl wife in winter's rude steal out at night through courts unclean to hunt about for chips of wood have i no word at all for him who used down fetid lanes to slink and squat in taproom corners grim and drown his thoughts in dregs of drink this much i'll say that when the flame of reason reassumed its force the hell that christian fears to name was heaven to his fierce remorse just think of him beneath the ban and steeped in sorrow to the neck without a friend a feeble man in failing health a human wreck with all his sense and scholarship how could he face his fading wife the devil never lifted whip with thongs like those that scourged his life but he in whom the dying thief upon the cross did place his trust forgets the sin and feels the grief and lifts the sufferer from the dust and now because i have a dream the man and woman found the light a glory burns upon the stream with gold and green the woods are bright but still i hate that haggard street its filthy courts its alleys wild in dreams of it i always meet the phantom of a wailing child the name of it begets distress ah song be silent show no more the lady in the parish dress the scholar on the taproom floor end a poem this recording is in the public domain Heath from the Highlands by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Here, where the great hills far away to bays of silver sea, I hold within my hand today a wild thing strange to me. Behind me is the deep green dell where lives familiar light. The leaves and flowers I know so well are gleaming in my sight and yonder is the mountain glen where sings in trees unstirred by breath of breeze or acts of men the shining satin bird the old weird cry of plover comes across the marshy ways 
and here the hermit hornet hums and here the wild bee strays no novel life or light i see on hill and dale beneath all things around are known to me except this bit of heath this touching growth hath made me dream it sends my soul afar to where the scottish mountains gleam against the northern star it droops this plant like one who grieves but while my fancy glows there is that glory on its leaves which never robed the rose for near its wind-blown native spot were born by crags uphurled the ringing songs of walter scott that shook the whole wide world there haply by the sounding streams and where the fountains break he saw the darling of his dreams the lady of the lake and on the peaks where never leaf of lowland beauty grew perhaps he met clan alpine's chief the rugged roderick dhu not far perchance this heather throve above fair banks of ferns from that green place of stream and grove that knew the voice of burns against the radiant riverways still waves the noble wood where in the old majestic days the scottish poet stood perhaps my heather used to beam in robes of morning frost by dells which saw that lovely dream the merry that he lost i hope indeed the singer knew the little spot of land on which the mountain beauty grew that withers in my hand a highland sky my vision fills i feel the great strong north the hard gray weather of the hills that brings men children forth the peaks of scotland where the din and flame of thunders go seems near me with the masculine hail suns of wind and snow so potent is this heather here that under skies of blue i seem to breathe the atmosphere that william wallace knew and under windy mountain wall where breaks the torrent loose i fancy i can hear the call of grand old robert bruce end of poem this recording is in the public domain the austral months by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas, Melbourne, Australia. January, the first fair month. In singing summer's sphere she glows, the eldest daughter of the year. All light, all warmth, all passion, breaths of myrrh, and subtle hints of roselands come with her. She is the warm, live month of lustre she makes glad the land and lulls the strong sad sea the highest hope comes with her in her face of pure clear colour lives exalted grace her speech is beauty and her radiant eyes are eloquent with splendid prophecies february the bright-haired blue-eyed last of summer lo her clear song lives in all the winds that blow the upland torrent and the lowland rill the stream of valley and the spring of hill the pools that slumber and the brooks that run where dense the leaves are green the light of sun take all her grace of voice and colour she with rich warm vine blood splashed from heel to knee comes radiant through the yellow woodlands far and near her sweet gifts shine like star by star she is the true demeter life of root glows under her in gardens flushed with fruit she fills the fields with strength and passion makes a fire of lustre on the lawn ringed lakes her beauty awes the great wild sea the height of grey magnificence takes strange delight and softens at her presence at the dear sweet face whose memory beams through all the year march clear upland voices full of wind and stream greet march the sister of the flying beam and speedy shadow she with rainbow crowned lives in a sphere of songs of mazy sound the hymn of waters and the gale's high tone with anthems from the thunder's mountain throne are with her ever this behold is she who draws its great cry from the strong sad sea she is the month of majesty her force is power that moves along a stately course within the lines of order like no wild and lawless strength of winter's fiercest child about her are the wind-whipped torrents far above her gleams and flies the stormy star 
and round her through the highlands and their rocks rings loud the grand speech from the equinox april the darling of australia's autumn now down dewy dells the strong swift torrents flow this is the month of singing waters here a tender radiance fills the southern year no bitter winter sets on herb and root within these gracious glades a frosty foot the spears of sleet the arrows of the hail are here unknown but down the dark green dale of moss and myrtle and the herby streams this april wanders in a home of dreams her flower soft name makes language falter all her paths are soft and cool and runnels fall in music round her and the woodlands sing for evermore with voice of wind and wing because this is the month of beauty this the crowning grace of all the grace that is may now sings a cool bland wind where falls and flows the runnel by the grave of last year's rose now underneath the strong perennial leaves the first slow voice of wintering torrent grieves now in a light like english august's day is seen the fair sweet chastened face of may she is the daughter of the year who stands with autumn's last rich offerings in her hands behind her gleams the ghost of april's noon before her is the far faint dawn of june she lingers where the dells and dewy lees catch stormy sayings from the great bold seas her nightly raiment is the misty fold that zones her round with moonlight coloured gold and in the day she sheds from shining wings a tender heat that keeps the life in things june not like that month when imperial space the high strong sun stares at the white world's face not like that haughty daughter of the year who moves a splendour in a splendid sphere but rather like a nymph of afternoon with cool soft sunshine comes australian june she is the calm sweet lady from whose lips no breath of living passion ever slips the wind that on her virgin forehead blows was born too late to speak of last year's rose she never saw a blossom but her eyes of tender beauty see blue gracious skies she loves the mosses and her feet have been in woodlands where the leaves are always green her days pass on with sea songs and her nights shine full of stars on lands of frosty lights july high travelling winds filled with the strong storm soul are here with dark strange sayings from the pole now is the time when every great cave rings with sharp clear echoes caught from mountain springs this is the season when all torrents run beneath no bright glad beauty of the sun here where the trace of last year's green is lost are haughty gales and lordships of the frost far down by fields forlorn and forelands bleak are wings that fly not birds that never speak but in the deep hearts of the glens unseen stand grave mute forests of eternal green and here the lady born in wind and rain comes off to moan and clap her palms with pain this is our wild-faced july in whose breast is never faultless light or perfect rest august across the range by every scarred black fell strong winter blows his horn of wild farewell and in the glens where yet there moves no wing a slow sweet voice is singing of the spring yea where the bright quick woodland torrents run a music trembles under rain and sun the lips that breathe it are the lips of her at whose dear touch the wan world's pulses stir the nymph who sets the bow of promise high and fills with warm life-light the bleak grey sky she is the fair-haired august ere she leaves she brings the woodbine blossom round the eaves and where the bitter barbs of frost have been she makes a beauty with her gold and green and while a sea song floats from bay and beach she sheds a mist of blossoms on the peach september grey winter hath gone like a wearisome guest and behold for repayment september comes in with the wind of the west and the spring in her raiment the ways of the frost have been filled of the flowers while the forest discovers wild wings with the halo of highline hours and the music of lovers 
September the maid with the swift silver feet, she glides and she graces the valleys of coolness, the slopes of the heat, with her blossomy traces. Sweet month, with a mouth that is made of a rose, she lightens and lingers, in spots where the harp of the evening glows, attuned by her fingers. The stream from its home in the hollow hill slips, in a darling old fashion. And the day goeth down with a song on its lips, whose keynote is passion. Far out in the fierce, bitter front of the sea, I stand and remember. Dead things that were brothers and sisters of thee, resplendent September. The west, when it blows at the fall of the noon, and beats on the beaches, is filled with a tender and tremulous tune that touches and teaches. The stories of youth, the burdens of time, and the death of devotion come back with the wind and are themes of the rhyme in the waves of the ocean. We, having a secret to others unknown in the cool mountain mosses, may whisper together, September, alone, of our loves and our losses. One word for her beauty and one for the grace she gave to the hours, and then we may kiss her and suffer her face to sleep with the flowers. High places that knew of the gold and the white on the forehead of morning now darken and quake, and the steps of the night are heavy with warning. Her voice in the distance is lofty and loud through the echoing gorges. She hath hidden her eyes in a mantle of cloud, and her feet in the surges. On the tops of the hills, on the turreted cones, chief temples of thunder, the gale like a ghost in the middle watch moans, gliding over and under. The sea, flying white through the rack and the rain, leapeth wild at the forelands and the plover whose cry is like passion with pain complains in the moorlands o season of changes of shadow and shine september the splendid my song hath no music to mingle with thine and its burden is ended but thou being born of the winds and the sun by mountain by river mayest lighten and listen and loiter and run with thy voices for ever october where fountains sing and many waters meet, October comes with blossom-trammelled feet. She sheds green glory by the wayside rills and clothes with grace the haughty-featured hills. This is the queen of all the year. She brings the pure chief beauty of our southern springs. Fair lady of the yellow hair, her breath starts flowers to life and shames the storm to death. Through tender nights and days of generous sun, by prospering woods her clear, strong torrents run. In far deep forests where all life is mute, of leaf and bough she makes a touching lute. Her life is lovely. Stream and wind and bird have seen her face, her marvellous voice have heard. And in strange tracts of wildwood all day long, they tell the story in surpassing song. November now beats the first warm pulse of summer, now there shines great glory on the mountain's brow. The face of heaven in the western sky, when falls the sun, is filled with deity. And while the first light floods the lake and lee, the morning makes a marvel of the sea. The strong leaves sing, and in the deep green zones of rock-bound glens the streams have many tones. And where the evening-coloured waters pass, now glides November down fair falls of grass. She is the wonder with the golden wings, who lays one hand in summers, one in springs. About her hair a sunset radiance glows, her mouth is sister of the dewy rose. And all the beauty of the pure blue skies has lent its luster to her soft, bright eyes. December The month whose face is holiness she brings with her the glory of majestic things. What words of light, what high resplendent phrase have I for all the luster of her days? She comes and carries in her shining sphere august traditions of the world's great year. The noble tale which lifts the human race has made a morning of her sacred face. Now in the emerald home of flower and wing, clear summer streams their sweet hosannas sing. The winds are full of anthems, and a lute speaks in the listening hills when night is mute. And through dim tracks where talks the royal tree, there floats a grand hymn from the mighty sea. And where the grey, grave, pondering mountains stand, high music lives. The place is holy land. 
End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Aboriginal Death Song by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Aboriginal Death Song Feet of the flying and fierce tops of the sharp-headed spear, Hard by the thickets that pierce, lo, they are nimble and near. Women are we, and the wives strong Arawada hath won, Weary because of our lives, sick of the face of the sun. Gula, our love and our light, what have they done unto you? Man of the star-reaching sight, dipped in the fire and the dew black-headed snakes in the grass struck at the fleet-footed lord still is his voice at the pass soundless his step at the ford far by the forested glen starkly he lies in the rain kings of the council of men shout for their leader in vain yea in the fish river clear never shall blacken below spear in the shadow of spear bow in the shadow of bow hunter and climber of trees now doth his tomahawk rust dread of the cunning wild bees hidden in hillocks of dust we who were followed and bound dashed under foot by the foe sit with our eyes to the ground faint from the brand and the blow dumb with the sorrow that kills sorrow for brother and chief terror of thundering hills having no hope in our grief seeing the fathers are far seeking the spoils of the dead left on the path of the war matted and mangled and red end a poem this recording is in the public domain sydney harbor by henry kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Where Hornby, like a mighty fallen star, Burns through the darkness with a splendid ring of tenfold light, And where the awful face of Sydney's northern headland stares all night, O'er dark determined waters from the east, From year to year a wild titanic voice of fierce aggressive sea Shoots up and makes when storm sails high through drifts of driving sleet, and in the days when limpid waters glass December's sunny hair and forest face, a roaring down by immemorial caves, a thunder in the everlasting hills. But calm and lucid as an English lake, beloved by beams and wooed by wind and wing, shut in from tempest-trampled wastes of wave and sheltered from white wraths of surge by walls grand ramparts founded by the hand of god the lordly harbour gleams yea like a shield of marvellous gold dropped in his fiery flight by some lost angel in the elder days when satan faced and fought omnipotence it shines amongst fair flowering hills and flows by dells of glimmering greenness manifold and all day long when soft-eyed spring comes round with gracious gifts of bird and leaf and grass and through the noon when sumptuous summer sleeps by yellowing runnels under beetling cliffs this royal water blossoms far and wide with ships from all the corners of the world and while sweet autumn with her gypsy face stands in the gardens splashed from heel to thigh with spinning vine blood yea and when the mild wan face of our australian winter looks across the congregated southern fens then low melodious shell-like songs are heard beneath proud hulls and pompous clouds of sail by yellow beaches under lisping leaves and hidden nooks to youth and beauty dear and where the ear may catch the counter voice of ocean travelling over far blue tracts moreover when the moon is gazing down upon her lovely reflex in the wave what time she sitting in the zenith makes a silver silence over stirless woods 
then where its echoes start at sudden bells and where its waters gleam with flying lights the haven lies in all its beauty clad more lovely even than the golden lakes the poet saw while dreaming splendid dreams which showed his soul the far hesperides and a poem this recording is in the public domain a birthday trifle by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c here in this gold green evening end while air is soft and sky is clear what tender message shall i send to her i hold so dear what rose of song with breath like myrrh and leaf of dew and fair pure beams shall i select and give to her the lady of my dreams alas the blossom i would take the song as sweet as persian speech and carry for my lady's sake is not within my reach i have no perfect gift of words or i would hasten now to send a ballad full of tunes of birds to please my lovely friend but this pure pleasure is my own that i have power to waft away a hope as bright as heaven's zone on this her natal day may all her life be like the light that softens down in spheres divine as lovely as a lapland night all grace and chastened shine end of poem this recording is in the public domain frank dens by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by tavarish in the roar of the storm in the wild bitter voice of the tempest whipped sea the cry of my darling my child comes ever and ever to me and i stand where the haggard-faced wood stares down on a sinister shore but all that is left is the hood of the babe i can cherish no more a little blue hood with the shawl of the girl that i took for my wife in a happy old season is all that remains of the light of my life the wail of a woman in pain and the sob of a smothering bird they come through the darkness again in the wind and the rain they are heard how oh, women and men who have known the perils of weather and wave it is sad that my sweet ones are blown under sea without shelter of grave i sob like a child in the night when the gale on the waters is loud my darlings went down in my sight with neither a coffin nor shroud in the whistle of wind and the whirl of ominous fragments of wreck the wife with her poor little girl saw death on the lee of the deck but sirs she depended on me she trusted my comforting word she is down in the depth of the sea my love with her beautiful bird in the boat i was ordered to go i was not more afraid than the rest but a husband will falter you know with the love of his life at his breast my captain was angry a space but soon he grew tender in tone perhaps there had flashed by his face a wife and a child of his own i was weak for some moments and cried but only one hope was in life the hood upon baby i tied i fastened the shawl on my wife the skipper took charge of the child he stuck to his word till the last but only this hood on the wild bitter shore of the sea had been cast 
in the place of a coward who shook like a leaf in the quivering boat a seat by the rowlocks i took but the sea had me soon by the throat the surge gripped me fast by the neck in a ring and a roll and a roar i was cast like a piece of the wreck on a bleak beaten shelterless shore and there were my darlings on board for the rest of that terrible day and i watched and i prayed to the lord as never before i could pray the windy hills stared at the black heavy clouds coming over the wave my girl was expecting me back but where was my power to save ah where was my power when death was glaring at me from the reef i cried till i gasped for my breath aloof with a maddening grief we couldn't get back to the deck i wanted to go but the sea dashed over the sides of the wreck and carried my darling from me o oh, girl that i took by the hand to the altar two summers ago i would you were buried on land my dear it would comfort me so i would you were sleeping where grows the grass and the musical reed for how can you find a repose in the toss of the tangle and weed the night sped along and i strained to the shadow and saw to the end my captain and bird he remained to the death a superlative friend in the face of the hurricane wild he clung with the babe to the mast to the last he was true to my child he was true to my child to the last the wind like a life without home comes mocking at door and at pane in the time of the cry of the foam in the season of thunder and rain and dreaming i start in the bed and feel for my little one's brow but lost is the beautiful head the cradle is tenantless now my home was all morning and glow when wife and her baby were there but ah it is saddened you know by dresses my girl used to wear i cannot re-enter the door its threshold can never be crossed for fear i should see on the floor the shoes of the child i have lost there were three of us once in the world but two are deep down in the sea where waif and where tangle are hurled the two that were portions of me they are far from me now but i hear when hushed are the night and the tide the voice of my little one near the step of my wife by my side end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sydney Exhibition, Canada, by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Part 1. Songs of morning with your breath, sing the darkness now to death. Radiant river, beaming bay, fair as summer, shine today. Flying torrent, falling slope, wear the face as bright as hope. Wind and woodland, hill and sea, lift your voices, sing for glee. Greet the guests your fame has won, put your brightest garments on. Lo, they come, the lords unknown, sons of peace from every zone. See above our waves unfurled, all the flags of all the world. North and south and west and east, gather in to grace our feast shining nations let them see how like england we can be mighty nations let them view sons of generous sires in you 
by the days that sound afar sound and shine like star by star by the grand old years aflame with the fires of england's fame heirs of those who fought for right when the world's wronged face was white meet these guests your fortune sends as your fathers met their friends let the beauty of your race glow like morning in your face part two when now a radiant city stands the dark oak used to wave the open harp of lonely lands above the wild man's grave through windless woods one clear sweet stream stole like the river of a dream a hundred years ago upon the hills that blaze to-day with splendor dome and spire the naked hunter tracked his prey and slumbered by his fire within the sound of shipless seas the wild rose used to blow about the feet of royal trees a hundred years ago ah haply on some mossy slope against the shining springs in those old days the angel hope sat down with folded wings perhaps she touched in dreams sublime in glory and in glow the skirts of this repleasant time a hundred years ago part three a gracious morning on the hills of wet and wind and mist her glittering feet has set the life and heat of light have chased away australia's dark mysterious yesterday a great glad glory now floats down and shines on gold green lands where waved funeral pines and hence a fair dream goes before our gaze and lifts the skirts of the hereafter days and sees afar as dreams alone can see the splendid marvel of the years to be part four father all bountiful humbly we bend to thee heads are uncovered in sight of thy face here in the flow of the psalms that ascend to thee teach us to live for the light of thy grace here in the pause of the anthems of praise to thee master and maker preeminent friend teach us to look to thee give all our days to thee now and for evermore world without end end of poem this recording is in the public domain hymn of praise by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c encompassed by the psalm of hill and stream by hymns august with their majestic theme here in the evening of exalted days to thee our friend we bow with breath of praise the great sublime hosannas of the sea ascend on wings of mighty winds to thee and mingled with their stately words are tones of human love o lord of all the zones ah at the close of many splendid hours while falls thy gracious light in radiant showers we seek thy face we praise thee bless thee sing this song of reverence master maker king to thee from whom all shining blessings flow all gifts of lustre all the joys we know to thee o father in this lordly space the great world turns with worship in its face for that glad season which will pass to-day with light and music like a psalm away the gathered nations with a grand accord in sight of thy high heaven thank thee lord all praise is thine all love that we can give 
is also thine in whose large grace we live in whom we find the one long-suffering friend whose immemorial mercy has no end end of poem this recording is in the public domain basil moss the poems of henry kendall read for librivox.org by alan lawley sing mountain wind thy strong superior song thy haughty alpen anthem over tracks whose passes and whose swift rock straitened streams catch mighty life and voice from thee and make a lordly harmony on sea chaff heights sing mountain wind and take thine ancient tone the grand austere imperial utterance which drives my soul before it backs to days in one dark hour of which when storm rode high past broken hills and when the polar gale roared around the otway with the bitter breath that speaks for ever of the white south land along with god and silence in the cold i heard the touching tale of basil moss a story shining with a woman's love and who that knows that love can ever doubt how dear divine sublime a thing it is for while the tale of basil moss was one not blackened with those stark satanic sins which call for superhuman sacrifice still from the records of the world's sad life this great sweet gladdening fact at length we learned there's not a depth to which a man can fall no slough of crime in which such one can lie stoned with the scorn and curses of his kind but that some tender woman can be found to love and shield him still what was the fate of basil moss who thirty years ago a brave high-minded but impetuous youth left happy homesteads in the sweetest isle that wears the sober light of northern suns what happened him the man who crossed far fierce sea circles of the horse atlantic who without a friend to help him in the world commenced his battle in this fair young land a levite in the temple beautiful of art who struggled hard but found that here both bard and painter learned by bitter ways that they are aliens in the working world and that all heaven's temple clouds at morn and sunset do not weigh one loaf of bread this was his tale for years he kept himself erect and looked his troubles in the face and grappled them and being helped at last by one who found she loved him who became the patent sharer of his loss to steer he beat them bravely back but like the heads of learners fabled hydra they returned from day to day in numbers multiplied and so it came to pass that basil moss who was though brave no mental hercules who hid beneath a calmness forced the keen heart-breaking sensibility which is the awful wild specific curse that clings for ever to the poet's twofold life gave way at last but not before the hand of sickness fell upon him not before the drooping form and sad averted eyes of hectic hope that figured far and faint had given all his later thoughts a tongue it is too late too late there is no need to tell the elders of the english world what followed this from step to step the man now fairly gripped by fierce intemperance descended in the social scale and though 
he struggled hard at times to break away and take the old free dauntless stand again he came to be as helpless as a child and darkness settled on the face of things and hope fell dead and will was paralyzed yet sometimes in the gloomy breaks between each fit of madness issuing from his sin he used to wander through familiar woods with god's glad breezes blowing in his face and try to feel as he was wont to feel in other years but never could he find again his old enthusiastic sense of beauty never could he exercise the evil spell which seemed to shackle down the fine keen supple faculties that used to see into the heart of loveliness and therefore basil learned to shun the haunts where nature holds her chiefest courts because they forced upon him in the saddest light the fact of what he was and once had been so far the drunkard for five or four years the last of which while lightning singing dells with many a flame of flowers found basil moss cooped with his wife in one small wretched room and there one night the man when ill and weak a sufferer from his latest bout of sin moaned stricken sorely with a fourfold sense of all the degradation he had brought upon himself and his patient wife and while he wrestled with his strong remorse he looked upon a sweet but pallid face and cried my god is this the trusting girl i swore to love to shield to cherish so but ten years back oh what a liar i am she shivering in a thin and faded dress beside a handful of pale smouldering fire on hearing basil's words moved on her chair and turning to him blue beseeching eyes and pinched pathetic features faintly said oh basil love now that you seem to feel and understand how much i've suffered since you first gave way now that you comprehend the bitter heart-wearing darling that has brought the swift sad silver to this hair of mine which should have come with age which came with pain do make one more attempt to free yourself from what is slowly killing both of us and if you do the thing i ask of you if you but try this once we may indeed we may be happy yet then basil moss remembering in his marvellous agony how often he had found her in the dead of icy nights with uncomplaining eyes a watcher in a cheerless room for him and thinking too that often while he threw his scanty earnings over reeking bars the darling that he really loved through all was left without enough to eat then moss i say sprang to his feet with sinews set and knotted brows and throat that grasped for air and cry aloud my poor poor girl i will and so he did and fought this time the fight out to the bitter end and with the help of prayers and unremitting tenderness he gained the victory at last but not no not before the agony and sweat of fierce gethsemane had come to him and not before the awful nightly trials when set in mental furnaces of flame with eyes that ached and wooed in vain for sleep he had to fight the devil holding out the cup of liti to his fevered lips but still he conquered and the end was this that though he often had to face the eyes of that bleak virtue which is not of christ 
because the gracious Lord of love was one with him who blessed the dying thief upon the cross. He held his way with no unfaltering steps and gathered hope and light and never missed to do a thing for the sake of good. And every day that glided through the world saw some fine instant of his bright reform and some assurance he would never fall into the pits and traps of hell again. And thus it came to pass that Basil's name grew sweet with men, and when he died, his end was calm, was evening-like and beautiful. Here ends the tale of Basil Moss, two wives who suffer as the painter's darling did. I dedicate these lines and hope they'll bear in mind those efforts of her lovely life which saved her husband's soul and proved that while a man who sins can entertain remorse he is not wholly lost. If such as they but follow her they may be sure of this that love that sweet authentic messenger from God can never fail while there is left within the fallen one a single pulse of what the angels call humanity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hunted Down by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Hunted Down Two years had the tiger, whose shape was that of a sinister man, been out since the night of escape, two years under horror and ban. In a time full of thunder and rain, when hurricanes hackled the tree, he slipped through the sludge of a drain and swam a fierce fork of the sea. Through the roar of the storm and the ring and the wild savage whistle of hail did this naked, whipped, desperate thing break loose from the guards of the jail. And breasting the foam of the bay and facing the fangs of the bite, with a great, cruel cry on his way, he dashed through the darkness of night. But foiled was the terror of Finn and baffled the strength of the tide, for a devil supported his chin and a fiend kept a watch at his side. And hands of iniquity dressed the hellish hyena and gave him food in the hills of the west in cells of indefinite cave. Then, strengthened in weapon, this peer of the brute on the track of its prey sprang out and shed sorrow and fear through the beautiful fields of the day. And pillage and murder and worse swept peace from the face of the land the black, bitter work of this curse with the blood on his infamous hand. But Wolf of the Hills at the end, chased back to the depths of his lair, had horror for neighbor and friend. He supped in the dark with despair. A whisper of leaf or a breath of the wind in the watch of the night was ever as message of death to this devil, bent double with fright. For now were the hunters abroad, and the fiend like an adder at bay, cast out of the sight of the Lord, in the folds of his fastness lay. Yea, skulking in pits of the slime, in venomous dens of eclipse, he cowered and bided his time, with a white malice set on his lips. Two years had his shadow been cast in forest, on highway, and run, but Nemesis tracked him at last, and swept him from under the sun. Foul felons in chains were ashamed to speak of the bloodthirsty thing who lived like a panther inflamed the life that no singer can sing. Who butchered one night in the wild three women, a lad and a maid, and cut the sweet throat of a child, its mother's pure blood on his blade. But over the plains and away by the range and the forested lake, rode hard for a week and a day, the terrible tracker Dick Blake. Dick Blake had the scent of a hound, the eye of a lynx, and could track 
where never a sign on the ground or the rock could be seen by the black a rascal at large when he heard that blake was out hard at his heels felt just as the wilderness bird and the snare fettered hopelessly feels and hence when the wolf with a brand of cane written thrice on his face knew terrible dick was at hand he slunk like a snake to his place to the depths of his kennel he crept far back in the passages dim but blake and his mates never slept they hunted and listened for him the mountains were many but he who had captured big terrigal bill the slayer of hawkins and lee found tracks by a conical hill there were three in the party no more dick blake and his brother and one who came from a far away shore called here by the blood of his son two nights and two days did they wait on the trail of the cursed of all men but on the third morning a fate led dick to the door of the den and a thunder ran up from the south and smote all the woods into sound and blake with an oath on his mouth called out for the fiend underground but the answer was blue bitter lead and the brother of dick with a cry fell back and the storm overhead set night like a seal on the sky in the strength of the hurricane tore a sunder hill turrets uphurled and a rushing of rain and a roar made wan the green wits of the world the flame and the roll and the ring and the hiss of the thunder and hail set fear on the face of the spring laid bare to the arrow of gale but here in the flash and the din in the cry of the mountain and wave dick blake through the shadow dashed in and strangled the wolf in his cave end a poem this recording is in the public domain Womberall by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles Womberall Just a shell to which the seaweed glittering yet with greenness clings Like the song that once I love so softly of the old times sings Softly of the old times speaketh bringing ever back to me Sights of far-off lordly forelands, glimpses of the sounding sea. Now the cliffs are all before me, now indeed do I behold shining growths on wild wet hillheads, quiet pools of green and gold. And across the gleaming beaches, lo, the mighty flow and fall of the great ingathering waters thundering under Womberall. Back there are the pondering mountains, there the dim dumb ranges loom, ghostly shapes in dead grey vapour, half-seen peaks august with gloom, there the voice of troubled torrents, hidden in unfathomed deeps, known to moss and faint green sunlight, wanders down the oozy steeps, there the lake of many runnels nestles in a windless wild, far amongst thick-folded forests like a radiant human child and beyond surf smitten uplands high above the highest spur lo the clouds like tents of tempest on the crags of kincumber womberall the home of echoes hard against a streaming strand sits the hill of blind black caverns at the limits of the land here the haughty water marches, here the flights of straitened sea make a noise like that of trumpets breaking wide across the lee. But beyond in yonder crescent, that a ring of island locks, are the gold and emerald cisterns shining moonlike in the rocks. Clear bright cisterns zoned by mosses, where the faint wet blossoms dwell, with the leaf of many colours down beside the starry shell friend of mine beyond the mountains here and here the perished days come like sad reproachful phantoms in the deep grey evening haze come like ghosts and sit beside me 
when the noise of day is still and the rain is on the window and the wind is on the hill then they linger but they speak not while my memory roams and roams over scenes by death made sacred other lands and other homes places sanctified by sorrow sweetened by the face of yore face that you and i may look on friend and brother never more seasons come with tender solace time lacks neither light nor rest but the old thoughts were such dear ones and the old days seem the best and to those who've loved and suffered every pulse of wind or rain every song with sadness in it brings the peopled past again therefore just this shell yet dripping with this weed of green and grey sets me thinking sets me dreaming of the places far away dreaming of the golden rock pools of the foreland and the fall and the home behind the mountains looming over Womberall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Memoriam Alice Van Gunn Stenhouse The Poems of Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. The grand authentic songs that roll Across grey widths of wild-faced sea The lordly anthems of the pole Are loud upon the lee. Yea, deep and full the south wind sings The mighty symphonies that make A thunder at the mountain springs A whiteness on the lake. And where the hermit hornet hums, When summer fires his wings with gold, The hollow voice of August comes Across the rain and cold. Now on the misty mountain tops, Where gleams the crag and glares the fell, Wild winter like one hunted stops And shouts a fierce farewell. Keen fitful guests shoot past the shore And hiss by moor and moody mere The heralds bleak that come before The turning of the year. A sobbing spirit wanders where By fits and starts the wildfire shines Like one who walks in deep despair With death amongst the pines. And ah, the fine, majestic grief Which fills the heart of forests lone And makes a lute of limb and leaf Is human in its tone. Too human for the thought to slip How every song that sorrow sings Betrays the broad relationship Of all created things. Man's mournful speech, the wail of tree the words the winds and waters say make up that general elegy whose burden is decay. Tonight my soul looks back and sees across wind broken wastes of wave, a widow on her bended knees beside a new made grave. A sufferer with a touching face by love and grief made beautiful, whose rapt religion lights the place where death holds awful rule. The fair, tired soul, whose twofold grief for child and father lends a tone of pathos to the pallid leaf that sighs above the stone. The large beloved heart whereon she used to lean, lie still and cold, Where like the seraph shines the sun, On flowerful green and gold. I knew him well, the grand, 
the sweet, pure nature past all human praise, the dear Gamalee at whose feet I sat in other days. He glorified by godlike lore, first showed my soul life's highest aim, when like one winged I breathed before the years of sin and shame. God called him home, and in the calm, beyond our best possessions priced, he passed as floats a faultless psalm to his fair father, Christ. But left this solace for the hours of sorrow and the loss thereof, a sister of the birds and flowers, the daughter of his love, she, like a stray sweet seraph, shed A healing spirit that flamed and flowed As if about her bright young head A crown of saintship glowed Suppressing with sublime self-slight The awful face of that distress Which fell upon her youth like blight She shone like happiness and in the home so sanctified by death in its most noble guise she kissed the lips of love and dried the tears in sorrow's eyes and helped the widowed heart to lean so broken up with human cares on one who must be felt and seen by such pure souls as hers. Moreover, having lived and learned the taste of life's most bitter spring, for all the sick this sister yearned, the poor and suffering. But though she had for every one the phrase of comfort and the smile, this shining daughter of the sun was dying all the while. Yet self-withdrawn, held out of reach, Was grief, except when music blent, Its deep, divine, prophetic speech, With voice and instrument. Then sometimes would escape a cry, From that dark other life of hers, The half of her humanity, And sob to sound and verse. At last there came the holy touch, With psalms from higher homes and hours, And she who loved the flowers so much, Now sleeps amongst the flowers. By hearse-like yews and grey-haired moss, Where wails the wind in starts and fits, Twice bowed and broken down with loss, The wife, the mother, sits. God help her soul, she cannot see, for very trouble anything, beyond this word, Gethsemane, of swift black suffering. Except it be that faltering faith, which leads the lips of life to say, there must be something past this death, Lord, teach me how to pray. Ah, teacher, Lord, and shed through grief the clear full light, the undefiled, the blessing of the bright belief which sanctified her child. Let me, a son of sin and doubt, whose feet are set in ways amiss, who cannot read thy riddle out, just plead and ask thee this. Give her the eyes to see the things the life and love I cannot see, And lift her with the helping wings Thou hast denied to me. Yea, shining from the highest blue On those that sing by Beulah's streams, Shake on her thirsty soul the dew Which brings immortal dreams, So that her heart may find the great pure faith for which it looks so long, 
and learn the noble way to wait, to suffer and be strong. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From the Forests The Poems of Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org By Alan Lawley Where in a green moist myrtle dell The torrent voice rings strong And clear above a star bright well I write this woodland song The melodies of many leaves Float in a fragrant zone and here are flowers by deep mossed eaves that day has never known. I'll weave a garland out of these, the darlings of the birds, and send it over singing seas with certain sunny words, with certain words alive with light, of welcome for a thing, of promise born beneath the white, soft afternoon of spring. The faithful few have waited long, a life like this to see, and they will understand the song that flows today from me. May every page within this book be as a radiant hour, or like a bank of mountain brook, or flower and leaf and flower. May all the strength and all the grace of letters make it beam, as beams a lawn whose lovely face is as a glorious dream. And may that strange divinity that men call genius write, some deathless thing in days to be, to fill those days with light. Here where the free, frank waters run, I pray this book may grow, a sacred candor like the sun, above the morning snow. May noble thoughts in faultless words in clean white diction make it shine as shines the home of birds and moss and leaf and lake. This fair phrase life with joy I hail and this belief express its days will be a brilliant tale of effort and success. Here ends my song I have a dream of beauty like the grace which lies upon the land of stream in yonder mountain place. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. John Bede Poldy by Henry Kindle Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson with reverent eyes and bowed uncovered head a son of sorrow kneels by fanes you knew but cannot say the words that should be said to crowned and winged divinities like you the perfect speech of superhuman spheres man has not heard since he of nazareth slain for the sins of twice two thousand years saw godship gleaming through the gates of death and therefore he who in these latter days has lost a father falling by the shrine, can only use the world's ephemeral phrase, not, Lord, the faultless language that is thine. But he, thy son, upon whose shoulders shone so long Elisha's gleaming garments, may be pleased to hear a pleading human tone to sift the spirit of the words I say. O Master, since the gentle Stenhouse died, and left the void that none can ever fill, one harp at least has sorrow thrown aside its strings all broken, and its notes all still. Some lofty lord of music yet may find its pulse of passion. I can never touch the chords again. My life has been too blind. I've sinned too long, and suffered too much. But you will listen to the voice, although the harp is silent. You who glorified your great sad gift of life, because you know how souls are tempted, and how hearts are tried. O marvellous follower in the steps of Christ, how pure your spirit must have been to see the light beyond our best expression priced the effluence of benignant deity. 
You saw it, father? Let me think you did, because I, groping in the midst of doubt, and sometimes fearful that God's face is hid from all, that none can read his riddle out, a hope from lives like yours must everywhere become like faith, that blessing undefiled, the refuge of the grey philosopher, the consolation of the simple child. Here in a land of many sects, where God, as shaped by man, in countless forms appears, few comprehend how carefully you trod without a slip for two and forty years. How wonderful the self-repression must have been that made you to the lovely close the Christian crowned with universal trust, the foeless father in a land of foes. How patiently, with how divine a strength of tolerance you must have watched the phrase of fighting churches, warring through the length of your bright, beautiful, unruffled days. Because men strove, you did not love them less. You felt for each, for every one and all, with that same apostolic tenderness which Samuel felt when yearning over Saul. A crowned hierophant, a high chief priest, on flame with robes of light you used to be. But yet you were as humble as the least of those who followed him of Galilee. Mid splendid forms of faith which flower and fill God's oldest church with gleams ineffable, you stand, our Lord's serene disciple still, in all the blaze which on your pallium fell. The pomp of altars, chasubles, and fires of incense moved you not nor yet the dome of haughty beauty, follower of the sires, who made a holiness of elder Rome. A lord of scholarship whose knowledge ran through every groove of human history, you were this and more, a Christian gentleman, a fount of learning with a heart like dew. O Father, I who at your feet have knelt on wings of singing, fall and fail to sing, remembering the immense compassion felt by you for every form of suffering, as dies a gentle April in a sky of faultless beauty, after many days of loveliness and grand tranquility, so past your presence from our human gaze. But though your stately face is as the dust that windy hills to wintering hollows give, your memory like a deity august is with us still to teach us how to live. Ah, may it teach us, may the lives that are take color from the life that was, and may those souls be helped that in the dark so far have strayed and have forgotten how to pray. Let one of these at least retain the hope that fine examples, like a blessed dew of summer falling in a fruitful scope, give birth to issues beautiful and true. Such hope, O oh Master, is a light indeed to him that knows how hard it is to save the spirit resting on no certain creed, who kneels to plant this blossom on your grave. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ultra Myrrh by Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I see, as one in dreaming, a broad, bright, quiet sea. Beyond it lies a haven the only home for me. Some men grow strong with trouble, but all my strength is past, and tired and full of sorrow, I long to sleep at last. By force of chance and changes, man's life is hard at best, and seeing rest is voiceless, the dearest thing is rest. Beyond the sea behold it, the home I wish to seek, the refuge of the weary, the solace of the weak. Sweet angel fingers beckon, sweet angel voices ask, my soul to cross the waters, and yet I dread the task. God help the man whose trials are tears that he must reap. He cannot face the future, his only hope is sleep. Across the main a vision of sunset coasts and skies and widths of water gleaming enchant my human eyes. I, who have sinned and suffered, have sought with tears have sought. 
to rule my life with goodness and shape it to my thought and yet there is no refuge to shield me from distress except the realm of slumber and great forgetfulness end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of other poems eighteen seventy one to eighty two by henry kendall